DW, how are you? How are things going? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. Are you in Toronto right now? I am in Toronto. Yes. Loving this beautiful weather. I know. Summer hit super early this year. <laughs> yeah. I'm not complaining. Not no, complaining. no. Okay. Well, let, let's go back to September before, you know, I want, I want to talk to you a little bit about TIFF because that's when I first saw Backspot and I just was like my jaw on the floor. It's so good. And I wanted to know from you, you know, Canadian. And I, I mean, how proud were you? What was it like going back to that premiere, world premiere? here in Toronto. That, that's got to be pinch me moment. It was wild. I love Toronto so much. I moved here when I was 18. I love this city so much. And I love TIFF so much. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've been attending that festival for at least over 10 years. I saw the world premiere of Black Swan there. I saw the world premiere of Juno there. Like I could just name off all these incredible films films that I was like one of the first audience members to see and it, right. it does mean so much to be in those rooms so so to have my debut feature at the festival kind of like in my hometown you know there's crew members there's cheerleaders but then there's like all these people who have you know just come because they want to see a great movie and it was just yeah. so integrating and what what a moment I'll remember forever I can just imagine. Yeah. Well, let it not be your last movie. You got to promise me that. Okay. <laughs> I promise. I promise. Okay. So I, I can't even believe that this is your debut feature. Like you just, like I said, did such a great job. How does your background as a DJ, you know, how does that influence your decision to become a, a director? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I've always been directing or denying the director inside of me, um, you know, renting movies when I was a kid from Blockbuster, like that was the highlight of my week. I've always been like a drummer or music, like they've always kind of been hand in hand. Yeah. Um, I did a digital web series called That's My DJ, which mm -hmm. was where I was able to kind of flex and explore my directing chops and kind of show like, wow, this like DJing world in Toronto is crazy and there's so much drama and life here right. um but I never saw myself represented when you think of directors and so I just never thought there was a place for me forever and every time I would maybe think to entertain that there could be a future for me you know there were always people around kind of saying well no or it's really hard and but it's just it's in me it, you know yeah. I feel like I was born to be a director it's oozing out of me and I've just kind of like let go at this point and I've just stepped into my own skin and especially with this film and yeah yeah there is so there's so much connectivity between DJing and directing you're a leader you're leading a group of people mm -hmm. through a story um when you're DJing, you're kind of getting everybody on the same page, you know, depending on if they're drunk or they're high or they're sober or they don't know who you are and you need to get them all on to the same page and then take everybody on a journey together. And I think that's very similar to telling a story and, and being on set and also directing an audience. 100%. And then, you know, th with this film, you know, you come from a, a your background, your family, like you grew up in a hockey family. So there's like competition. I mean, we know what hockey families are like in Canada, you know, I, I thank God every day that both my sons did not go that route because I would be dirt poor right now. But anyway, yes, you would. <laughs> but having said that, I mean, it, it is so competitive. And so what kind of connected you to this story of cheerleading and, and, and backspot? I mean, wow, it was pretty eye opening to me. Yeah. I mean, like you said, growing up in a hockey household, like you know, I was there for when my brother was uh, doing tryouts and like all the parents in the arena and the tension and the shit talking and the pressure. And if a team was winning or losing, how that would impact, you know, the stress of my household, which I was like, why is this sport impacting all of these family members mental health, mm. you know? And, and for me, I really kind of wanted to try to figure that out and break that. Um, as a cheer, uh, as a DJ, I used to wear a cheerleading uniform. And so I felt like there was a kind of a little bit of a fun way into that. Um, but yeah, it was, it wasn't until I kind of saw this video go viral online of a cheerleader kind of like, you know, getting into her like practice zone and doing stretches and somebody kind of stretching her out, but she was in pain and she was screaming for pain. And I think that was my first for foray into realizing, oh, wow, like the cheerleading we get is the final, the final, you know, performance. Right. not but the lead up. Yeah, not the lead up. And yeah. I was like, well, what's the lead up? And that kind of, you know, got me and I to to do like a 
a proof of concept. And in that proof of concept, I met Cheer Fusion, which is like an all-star cheer team in Brampton. Mm-hmm. Um, and they kind of just opened their doors to me and they're like, you know, come and watch and see what a practice is like. And I saw a concussion every practice. I saw broken bones. I saw cheerleaders running around being silly. I right. saw cheerleaders walking in the door with McDonald's, jamming a burger in their mouth, and then doing a bunch of flips, which was the craziest thing for me. Yeah. Yeah. But there's, you know, there's so much family and camaraderie and silliness. And then there's perfection and stress and anxiety and the toll it takes on their bodies. Like oh. nobody has ever explored this. And so I really wanted to highlight the athleticism in this sport. Right. And, and of course, we see that through Devery's um, um, character. My God, just watching that performance was unbelievable. Um why Devery? Why did? Why was she, she the right person? Is it she or there? I'm sorry. I, I she. Yep. She, she or yeah. they. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, why was she the right person to play this role? Because it was just a brilliant performance. I mean, we know she's a great actor, but <laughs> wow, that it's yeah. She took on a lot. Yeah, I mean, she is a star. She's an absolute beast. I mean, I remember we met at a film institute like six or seven years ago. Uh, and I remember watching Rhymes for Young Ghouls. And then like, that was such an incredible performance. Um, and little did I know, I think we were in a taxi cab going to TIFF. And I remember her turning around because uh, I was like, I think the movie I'm trying to break is a cheer sports movie. And she's mm-hmm. like, oh, I used to be a a provincial champion gymnast. And I was like, okay, great, you can be in it. And it was a total just like fun thing. But then I started to learn more about her and she's such an incredible actor. She's an incredible producer. She's so great with story development and everything she brought to Riley. She just made that character completely 3D. Yeah, and then just the stress that we see, like the, the, oh my God, the pulling of, you know, my son has a nervous tick too. And he, he pulls his hair like but from his legs and stuff. Yeah. It's going to kill me for telling you this, but, but whatever. But I, I noticed it because it, it, it was prevalent in my life, you know, mm-hmm. and it is a nervous tick and, and whatever, but just, just everything that goes with it. Um, how much aside from being with this cheer group, like, did you have to research or, or did you get most of it? from just being with these cheerleaders, you know, what they go through. Did you interview them and, you know, get their stress levels and where it goes and their relationships and everything? Yeah, I mean, I definitely pulled from just kind of like being there and in the environment with them and going to competition with them uh, or just being in the gym and watching them practice. I think, you know, we kind of saw uh, the spectrum of emotions and then also pulling from, you know, my teenagehood or from friends or fan, you know what I mean? We're just kind of pulling from personal experiences. I always find scripts are more 3d, uh, when you're pulling from personal experiences and, you know, that's also Devery pulling from her personal experience and putting that into the film. She was the one who was like, oh, we used to have like club sleepovers when- I was going to ask about the sleepovers because that was a nice levity to the film too. It's nice to yeah. see, that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, I never want to just go in and traumatize the shit out of the audience. I feel like a lot of <laughs> yeah. male directors, uh, you know, that's they're like, oh, I did something crazy because like I completely traumatized the audience by showing like dead bodies and violence. Right. But I'm like, there's enough violence in the world. I don't really need feel the need to add to that conversation. I yeah. feel like honestly, just watching an actor try to breathe and like having a really great score underneath and having anxiety, you can mm-hmm. you can still make an audience feel. Um, but I never want to kind of like throw the audience out. I still care about the audience. I still want them to have a good time and be entertained and to walk away with something that could maybe be a positive impact. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. Um, How did Evan come on board? Uh, Oh, gosh, so good. I mean, I just love her. I interviewed her so many times, and she just gets better and better with everything that she does. How did she connect with the script and with you? Yeah, so, I mean, working with Elliot Page and Page Boy Productions, when we were kind of ready to kind of, like, start our casting process, they're like, give us your top five actors, and Evan was number one. She was in her mind while writing it. I'm such a huge fan of Evan, like 13 yeah. wrestler, you know, across the universe. You could just go on and on. About oh, yeah. yeah. And for me, I'm like, I can see Backspot on that shelf with those mm. other films. It's a character she's never played before. And it, you know, with like a hefty monologue and this whole journey. And I'm like, 
well, let's take a shot. And so we did, we sent it to her team. Her team got back and they're like, this is a surprisingly good fit for Evan. You know, would you be down for a Zoom meeting? And so we met with her, Devry and I uh, on Zoom and just kind of chatted about the script and the character and just also like shot the shit and just see if we were like compatible as just like, you know, artists and colleagues and yeah it was just like a great we chatted for like an hour um but in that kind of chat she was like I was reading this script and it reminded me of 13 yeah uh, and yeah. Actor at the time you know she was the a big name and she kind of came and lifted up Catherine Hardwick's voice and and Evan and Nikki Reed and so she's like I you know it made me want to do that for this and, you know, trying to keep composure because 13 is like one of the best movies of all time. It's a good and, one. <laughs> and then kind of telling you this to your face and you're like, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I mean, listen, she is so professional. She's yeah. so cool. And as soon as that camera turned on, Eileen was present and everybody was terrified. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. She gives it her all. There's no question. So for people who aren't, you know, familiar with cheerleading, but the, the back spot is pr- pretty much the backbone of the squad correct yeah okay I want to know who you who has been your backbone supporting you and who are you the backbone for Hmm. I would say supporting me would probably be my producer Alona Metzer was was definitely like my backbone I'd also say Debra Jacobs was also my backbone she was like in the thick of it with me like throughout this entire process um And then I I would say like, I'm the backbone primarily for the actors, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm there to make sure that they feel safe, secure, good, that they can feel great to give me a a good performance and not have to worry about anything else. But I, you know, I kind of also have to be the backbone to everybody, you know, each department (laughs) head, you know, every single person, I want to make sure that I'm like a constant and I'm, am the cheerleader, you know, cheering people on because at the end of the day, I want the best performance from everybody. Uh, and that's how you, you know, ultimately make a good movie. Yeah. Um, so, so what's next? Are you working on your next project? You can talk about it or anything, or you just, things are, you know, going in the, that head of yours. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I am working on my second feature film. Uh, it's a bit of a psychological thriller, obviously still lots of tones from Backspot and it takes yeah. place in the reality television world. Oh, so- cool. I've realized, you know, I really like campy worlds, but I like to ground them and get into the nitty gritty. So that's kind of the second feature. And then Debbie Jacobs and I are writing a graphic novel together called The Hoof Lady, which nice. we did a beautiful concept on way back. So lots of irons in the fire. I'm just, yeah. I'm excited for people to see, to see Backspot. Oh yeah. I'm excited for people to see this too. It's like I said, you did such a great job, everybody in it, just such a good, good film. So congratulations to you. And, uh, you, you know, hopefully you. we'll talk, we'll talking to you you know again soon with these next projects so i I appreciate your time today i really do thank you yes thanks bonnie all right take care bye-bye